Welcome back. In the next few minutes, we'll complete the 4L60E disassembly. In the last lesson, we removed the front half or pump and drum section. Now we'll remove the rear or planetary gear section of the transmission. This is Project 4L60E, Part 1, Lesson 7. We're almost there. Our goal throughout the lessons in Part 1 of this project has been to get to an empty case with the parts arranged neatly on this bench. We have one last area to disassemble, so let's finish up. You'll need snap ring pliers, a screwdriver, rubber tip blow gun, a block of wood, and safety glasses. Removing the last of the components is easier with the transmission on its side. This sun gear may remain here or come out as you remove the input drum depending on which year you are working on. From 1993 until about 1998, you'll find it as you see here. Pull it out and set it on the bench. Next to the input drum. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses and remove the snap ring on the output shaft. Put the snap ring with the small parts. Remove the forward planetary gear set. Thrust bearing. And ring gear. Place them on the bench like so. Depending on year and model, you will find a thrust bearing as you see here, or a four tab thrust washer. Note that this part may come out with the ring gear. Remove the drive shell and the sun gear. The sun gear may come out with the shell. Remove a four tab plastic thrust washer and place it over the sun gear. On earlier model transmissions, you'll find a four tab thrust washer and a different style drive shell with the corresponding four holes. You'll find the same plastic thrust washer on these models. Remove it and place it over the sun gear. Like the other style parts, set them just behind the planet and ring gear. Use a screwdriver to lift up the end of this snap ring and pull it out. This is the low and reverse roller clutch housing. It's preloaded in this direction against the case blinds by a spring located here. The spring is called a case silencer because without it, the transmission would make a clacking sound when placed in drive. 
In order to get the low reverse housing out, we'll push it forward by tapping the output shaft. Use the block of wood and tap the output shaft with just enough force to push the housing clear of the splines in the case. You can now pull the output shaft out. Place it here. Remove the low reverse roller clutch housing. Remove the planet carrier and thrust bearing. Set them like this. Remove the reverse clutch pack. It consists of five clutch frictions, five clutch plates, and a wavy cushion plate. Set them down in the same order as removed. Remove the output ring gear and the output to case thrust bearing. Place them here. Here is the case silencer I mentioned earlier. It falls to the bottom of the case when the low reverse roller clutch housing is pushed forward. Put the silencer with the small parts. The last assembly to remove consists of the low reverse piston, return spring cage, and a snap ring. We'll turn the case upright to make it easier to remove. The spring cage must be compressed before the snap ring can be removed. I made a tool from scrap metal to compress not only this cage spring, but others in the input drums as well. It's simply a U-shaped piece of steel with a hole, a short length of threaded rod, and a few nuts in another straight piece. You can even make it from wood if you want to. Let me show you how it works. Set the U-shaped part on the spring cage. Notice how it straddles the snap ring giving us enough room to work. Reach up through the output shaft hole with the threaded part. The threaded rod goes through the hole. Start the butterfly nut and begin tightening. You only need to compress the cage about an eighth of an inch. Reach in with the snap ring pliers and remove the ring. Remove the tool. Take out the snap ring. This is the last part to go in the box. Remove the spring cage and set it on the bench. In order to remove the low reverse piston, it must be forced out with air pressure. Use a rubber tip blow gun 
and direct about 30 to 40 PSI into this port. If you don't have access to an air compressor, use an air tank with a regulator as I have here. As a safety precaution, dial the pressure down to no more than 40 pounds. Put the nozzle into the port. Make sure your fingers, arms, and face are away from the case and give it a short blast of air. The piston will pop out. Reach in the case and remove the piston. Set it here. This concludes our disassembly. We have an empty case on this bench and our sub-assemblies and parts neatly organized on another. This will be our starting point for part two, the reassembly. I'll see you there.